everyone. Uh, well, um, when I was in school, because my topic is uh, diabetes in school, and I have to talk about it, uh, I I realized very early, like in very early days of my uh, schooling, that uh, you get popular uh, in the school time when when you can do something that others can't. And uh, so I would like boast about, you know, injecting myself and pricking in front of my uh, friends and would show off my knowledge in the science of type 1 diabetes that I live with. And uh, I, I didn't feel that, you know, something like uh, a challenge in the school uh, you know, premises and the workplace can ever be a concern because I never had uh, realized that until when I flipped uh, the coin or let's say flip the slide, I realized that there have uh, been so many issues in the news, in the community itself. And so many people coming up to me uh, saying that, you know, there has been uh, discrimination against my child they're not letting my child uh, in the school like uh, these are the, these are some of the headlines of the uh, news uh, digital news or uh, the comments from the community itself so one one uh, one case that uh, you know reve was revealed was the occurrence of uh, type 1 diabetes in both the siblings and distressed parents had to stop sending their children to school due to the level of discrimination and constant bullying that too in Delhi NCR itself. And this uh, was, was the turning point for me. I, I had uh, this in mind that something has to be done around uh, the, the uh, challenges that a child is facing in their schools. So we did some formal and informal interviews and uh, we discussed with the parents, with the communities, and found out that. Well, so first of all, this challenge was for us. Nandini, how did we send him to school? Because in school, we were not familiar with diabetes. His teacher, type one diabetes, was not familiar with it. So it was quite scary. Then the challenge was that Nandini, how did we send him to school? Then the fear was that Nandini, how did we send him to school? Then the fear was that Nandini, how did we send him to school? Then the fear was that Nandini, how did we send him to school? Then the fear was that Nandini, how did we send him to school? Then the fear was that Nandini, how did फिर डर ये भी था कि नंदनी किसी बच्चे के संग में कोई टॉफी या चॉकलेट वगैरह छोटी थी वो उस समय पे कोई शेयर ना कर ले कुछ खाना ले ऐसी चीज जिससे उसकी डायबिटीज बढ़ जाए ये भी डर लगता रहता था कि कहीं कोई ऐसी चोट वगैरह ना लग जाए जो ज्यादा गंभीर हो जाए क्योंकि डायबिटीज में डॉक्टर वगैरह हम तो जानते नहीं थे पहले डॉक्टर वगैरह कहते थे कोई चोट वगैरह ऐसी ना लगे ऐसे फिर डर मैडम ये भी लगता था कि बच्चा अभी छोटा है ये अगर इसकी डायबिटीज लो में चली गई तो वो कैसे हैंडल कर I could have presented like lots of data, research work and all, but I felt that these stories had to be shared. These stories are uh, needed to be uh, in, the, in the forefront on the platform to reach out uh, to as many people. And uh, so a collaborative action can be taken towards the challenges and uh, discrimination against uh, children and of course even adults at the workplace so the big question is that's Rizal, sorry we can only see your first slide till now oh is it yeah oh oh oh, oh. But, but could you hear that we could hear the audio yes but i just want to just let you know that we're only seeing the first slide right now uh Prashant, is you are you also seeing the first there or is it just me? Yes, yes, yes. Actually, uh, I think she should be sharing the window, uh, then sharing the. I think it's just the tab that's being shared. Okay. Let me let me just and and yeah. So before she picks up some things, I'll just uh, mention translate what was said in Hindi uh, because uh, I'm sure that there are people international audience as well. So it was an audio of a, a T1 caregiver. Uh, talking about the difficulties a child is having in school. How does she take insulin shots at school? How does she monitor her sugar? Uh, and her hypo snacks shouldn't be shared with the other children because she needs that the most. So th these were the difficulties what uh, Bridula was uh, talking about and the caregivers yeah. shared. Yeah, yeah. It's, my yeah. Presence yeah it's, it's okay now. Yes, uh, yeah. now it's good. Okay, okay. I'm so sorry. I didn't realize that. Yeah. 
So, uh, does India have any laws around safe accommodation in the schools and workplace? This this was the question that just you know was on top of my mind, and even on uh, you know in the community's mind that why why don't we have any policies or do we have any policies that we don't know about? And the answer was no. Unfortunately, we don't have any policies. Of course, it's a right. Uh, any child in in going to any school, they cannot be discriminated. It it comes in general in the Disability Act and also in general that every child has the right to education and right to safe safe accommodation inside the schools. But for a child living with type one diabetes, the whole scenario changes. And one action that I still remember was taken by Dr. Ashok Jingen, sir, uh, under whom I did, uh, uh, you know, some some work. And uh, he he actually uh, announced or actually ad advocated that uh, every child going for board exams and in during the exams time in, in schools uh, or outside must have a snack. Uh, with them so that in case of low blood sugar levels, they can go uh, and eat or they can on their seats, they can have their snack and uh, prevent low blood sugar levels. But I also realized that uh, in other countries, there are uh, well-established well laws and even American Diabetes Disabilities Act uh, has been implemented by American Diabetes As Association, which actually prohibits most schools from discriminating against children with diabetes. I want to again come to another uh, story of uh, a child who is actually trying to express uh, the, the emotional trauma that uh, she has gone through. And I'll definitely uh, translate it into uh, English as well. Starting it in class, man. And this is what I have faced. 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 तो मुझे दिल्ली से ही अपना लिखाना पड़ा था लेकिन वहाँ दीदी क्लास पर और दीदी सब लोग मुझे मतलब जुला जुला दे दे अपन बात करते थे ना बहुत मैं इमोशनल हो जाती थी सही सो दिस चाइल्ड वो इज जस्ट 11 इयर्स ओल्ड and uh, she expressed herself and said that she she got really emotional she lives she doesn't live in an urban area and she said that uh, when we talked about my uh, type 1 diabetes in the school school staff said that yes she can come and they actually uh, you know told uh, everything about uh, type 1 diabetes how to manage that and all in case of low blood sugar levels or high blood sugar levels but uh, they they actually asked the child to wear a white uniform, which was separate from every other child, and uh, making it uh, visible for like you know for everyone to uh, understand that okay she is different she she uh, has some problem some issue and that's why she is in that kind of uniform. For a child, this this can only be called as a trauma because that child would never like uh, to be to be differentiated from others and of course when it's visible also another uh, point that she mentioned was in her uh, area no doctor was ready to write a letter to the school that she has this problem and this can be managed in this uh, way and uh, the, then she had to come to Delhi all the way from, uh, you know, Rajasthan to Delhi and uh, to get that letter from a doctor that she can manage her diabetes. The only uh, thing is in case of uh, an emergency, these all steps have to be followed. And the last point that she mentions is uh, that she felt like crying all the time. No, no person living with diabetes wants to be sympathized. They want, they want uh, 
to be empathized. They want that uh, their problems to be understood and they can actually take care of it. In It's, it's just that anyone can land up into a challenging situation. But uh, for a person living with type 1 diabetes and especially a child, it becomes really emotional and can even lead to diabetes, burnout and distress. So uh, I also researched and found out that the only study being done on the uh, Indian population is from Dr. Anju Virmani Ma'am. And uh, this study actually uh, understands some of the aspects uh, of uh, self-care in urban schools, including institutional attitudes and availability of support and the challenges around it. But uh, there's still uh, so much to be done. There are so many schools to be reached out because there might be, uh, you know, facilities available in the private schools in in the schools with better infrastructure. But uh, in in government schools and even also in private other schools, which might not be able to, you know, take care of every single child, uh, we need to uh, reach out and also to understand not just the uh, you know, caregivers and uh, children's perspective, but also the uh, perspective of the authorities and the schools. And uh, this is the last uh, story, which uh, actually uh, like totally, you know, moved me. Uh, this, this child was going uh, to the school for the first time after COVID and very excited and uh, she was already packed up with new bag and, uh, you know, pencil box and everything. But uh, her mother uh, found it really difficult to convince the school staff, even when the application and every detail was submitted in, inside the school, one of the reputed schools in Delhi. And uh, when she mentioned, uh, when as you can see, I've, I've you know, uh, highlighted this second comment. Uh, she was very excited on the first day, but she's a, she's a strong girl and she didn't react to it. I'm very concerned about uh, this, this statement because child who is just nine or 10 years old and is not able to express what their feeling is because they, their emotional uh, intellect has not been developed yet. And uh, this is a matter of concern because this is definitely going to restrict that child from every other thing in the school. They, the child might feel low, the child might feel inferior and might not even perform well in the studies or in other co-curricular activities. And so, we thought, why not bring in uh, some of the uh, experts, healthcare experts together and the community together at one single platform. And what we did was to divide, we divided them into uh, different groups with one or two healthcare professionals per group. And we asked them to discuss on the challenges as well as the solutions, which has been missed out from one group can be uh, understood through the presentation. And uh, on the uh, bottom right, you see all the points that have been captured uh, by the group, one of the groups. And uh, through the Women Lift Health uh, Fellowship, I, I decided to take this whole initiative further uh, by the name of, called Schooled Project, which is diabetes education and empowerment in schools, where we are going to bring in all the teachers and uh, students together and educate them in a very innovative way because it's in the development stage. I won't be able to talk about it much at this particular time, but definitely by the end of March, we'll be completing every single detail about this project, the uh, the, the proposal and uh, what you see on the right is already the theory of change that we have for the project and hope that uh, uh, something, something concrete can come up. The story, I want to end it uh, with a story. Uh, this this picture is uh, from outside the school of this child oh, whose anonymity has been maintained, and uh, we we discussed 
uh, everything with the school staff members school principal himself was a uh, type 2 uh, person living with diabetes and uh, we we uh, discussed that that sound so we discussed it with different uh, authorities teachers staffs and everyone and uh, the teachers and uh, the authorities have uh, confirmed that uh, we'll be conducting the program school program in their school uh, very soon and with a very structured uh, way yeah i'll stop here thank you so much and looking forward to any questions to be answered thank you so much